Nyong ke Richard Mr. Speaker, I want to say thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to also say a few things about uh, this bill. Mr. Speaker, I am actually extremely excited with the Senate as a house because we are now becoming proactive. Many of us have been raising the issues and discussing why the county governments and indeed the county assemblies look like they are all operating in a dysfunctional manner that is deliberately skewed to make sure that members of the county assembly do not get a working environment that is comfortable for them, that is going to be responsive to the needs of the public, whereby even sometimes their salaries are actually delayed, Mr. Speaker, and not because the money has not been released by the exchequer, no. It is because you find that the governor, once the members of the county assembly are beginning to plod and investigate some of the things which many of our governors are doing pertaining to financial mismanagement or management, Mr. Speaker, the scenario you have is that the governor sometimes have ended up being punitive, where they actually sometimes don't release the salaries of many of these members of the county assembly, where they have even sometimes delayed the release of funds which the government has issued for these members of the county assembly to even buy cars and even get mortgages for themselves. So this bill is good. It is going to cure one of the issues that we've been struggling with as a house. And I'm very proud of you, Mr. Speaker, just like my colleagues have said, that it's a bill which is thought out. The only thing, the only aspect that I saw is when Honorable Sosi raised the same issue that I was going to raise, and that is that we do not necessarily need the control of budget to give the permission for the money, the money to be transferred into the new account that is going to be set up within the county. Somebody to leave Kisi to head to Nairobi to come and us believe that once you control the money, then it's very easy for you to it's very easy for you to control the members of the county assembly so that they can actually deliberately start playing. There's no oversight. The governor walks around with members of the county assembly singing and saying how he's doing a wonderful job. And yet you find there are no medicines, there is no running water, the roads which are being done are done poorly. And Mr. Speaker, it's a matter, another matter that I want us to discuss at a soonest time possible is that some of our governors, like in my governor, Mr. Speaker, has brought in Chinese people who are cutting trees the whole of Kisi County. The assembly has not sat to decide whether they would have authorized such an activity to take place. As we speak, the Department of, uh, uh, the Department of uh, Environment has not told us what their forest cover is. And Mr. Speaker, you remember the president pronounced himself. He said we are no longer exporters of raw materials. Mr. Speaker, the Chinese have come. They are cutting the trees and putting them into boxes where, Honorable Boni, they cut the trees into small pieces put them into something that looks like containers and they take them to China so that they can put into some other process of value addition and they are shipped to Europe and America as if it is African wood that has left the African continent. Soon, we will then start mitigating and discussing how Kisi County has become desertified, how the trees have been cut, and I can tell you, Mr. Mr. Speaker, the information I have is that these Chinese individuals who are doing this are from Molo. They run down to uh, Bomet County. They are in Kericho County. They are in Kisi County. I'm told they are moving to Homa Bay. They have gone to Transoia. And I'm told, Mr. Speaker, that they are going to be in Washington Gishu. You can imagine what such things mean to our country. So, Mr. Speaker, I hope that this house will be engaged so that we can take the responsibility of having ward funds which are directly directly going to be released to their wards, whereby the money again does not need the governor's uh, inter inter interruption for the funds to be released, so long as the CIDP, Mr. Speaker, has passed and the money is in the consolidated fund electronically. 
the sub-county accounts, the sub-county procurement officer, the sub-county county government workers can then be now happy that at least funds are coming to the local level where these funds need to be. And I believe that this house has carried itself with the dignity it requires to the level where I believe that Kenyans are willing to give us the support to make sure, Mr. Speaker, that we keep changing the law effectively and we make sure that we close out the loopholes which, for example, have made the PFM Act nearly become obsolete. Remember, we rely on IFMIS as our financial platform. There are also challenges with that. We are having a shortfall of our exchequer releases for the, from the Treasury. We need to sort out that issue because, Mr. Speaker, we should not have many of our county governments if the funds are not released from the Treasury, can't we ask what are we supposed to do about it? With those few remarks, Mr. Speaker, I want to say thank you very much. I support this bill, and I think, I think it will go a long way to cure what many of us have been asking is cured. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At this juncture, uh, I will call the mover to reply. There is no other senator interested to debate on this bill. The majority leader. Um, Mr. Speaker, sir, and uh, jointly the sponsor, actually, of this uh, very important bill, I want to celebrate your work. I did this only because uh, I felt the need to actually assist you, having done the heavier task of coming together with the bill, of just um, doing the initial moving of the House to debate the record 28 senators have uh, spoken. Majority leader, you did not do anything wrong. I know you are also very passionate. Yeah. On, on, we were passionate on this bill. <laughs> Thank and you. And therefore, I can also decide to call you a co-sponsor if you talk to me nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So Mr. the bill can also bear your name. Mr. Speaker, I, I, in my moving notes, you're not here. Uh, I said that uh, this is justice to the county assemblies because in 2016, at the Pride Inn Resort, I think it was a pride in, if I'm not wrong. Uh, we had the inaugural legislative summit, which is a summit that brings together members of the county assembly and the Senate. Part of the takeaways from that summit, Senator Onyonka, is that we're going to do this for our county assemblies. It has taken us a freaking eight years to do this for them. It's completely unfair. I really hope that we can conclude on this, uh, preferably tomorrow. Uh, I didn't see any of the whips on the minority side, but I see Senator Alwale is here. I'm sure they have their own caucus of whips of the Senate. If they can rally numbers so that tomorrow afternoon we put this to a vote alongside other bills, uh, Mr. Speaker, so that uh, we can conclude on this, uh, put together the amendments that are needed, uh, Mr. Speaker, and uh, before we break on recess, have the National Assembly begin considering uh, this bill so that at least uh, if there's any chance, Mr. Speaker, that uh, our colleagues in the National Assembly can equally be pushed, and I will personally take the initiative to prioritize on this bill, uh, Mr. Speaker, it will be extremely important, so that at the very worst, this be the last financial year, Mr. Speaker, that members of our county assembly have to withstand this very embarrassing scenario that has been uh, described here. This is not the devolution that the late Dr. Crispino Diambombay envisioned for this country, Mr. Speaker. I'm sure when they sat down, as a technical committee that worked on the chapter of devolution in our constitution, Mr. Speaker, they expected better. This is not what they expected of our county assemblies. I know there is a lot more even that they didn't expect on the executive side. While we fix the executive, uh, Mr. Speaker, we must also aid our county assemblies to perform uh, their duties without any hindrance, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, I want to thank you. I thank all the 28 senators that have spoken uh, to this bill, Mr. Speaker and believe that uh, their contribution has not been in vain. When all is said and done, Mr. Speaker, we will all look back with pride and say, when we write our exit report of the 13th Parliament, as a members of the 4th Senate, Mr. Speaker, we will proudly put this and say, this is one of the hallmarks of our legislative work, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I believe um, when we resume, I don't know why we haven't had any so far, our legislative